Hi guys, welcome to Anatomy and Physiology Part 1. This is Bio 201. Um, I'm Dr. Allison Murky. I'm going to be your course instructor slash moderator for this semester. So you guys are all in the online version of Bio 201. Um, I've been teaching Bio 201 actually for many, many years. Um, it was my first teaching job was when I was a grad student was teaching anatomy and physiology. So we're actually going on like 15 years. <laughs> but in that time, I went to medical school. So I've I've kind of been all over the place. And um, hopefully throughout these videos that you're going to be watching of me, you'll get to know me a little bit better. And I'm also um, very interested in getting to know you all as well. Even though this is an online course, there's going to be opportunities for us to interact. And I'm very, very open for any kind of interaction. Um, really, all of you have, I, uh, all of you are working, I'm sure, with busy schedules and families and all kinds of things, other classes. Um, I want to know, though, I want to know what's going on for you guys. Are you nursing students? Are you biology students? There's, um, there's going to be a discussion board post where you can introduce yourself in this class. So please tell me a little bit about yourself. And I'll say this all the time. Don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, my role at Yavapai is I'm an online instructor for you all. I'm actually going to be teaching Bio 201 in person as well, but I'm not up at the Prescott campus. I'm down here at the Verde Valley campus in Clarkdale. So even if somebody wanted to drop by and meet me, if you're close to the Clarkdale campus or if you wanted to do a Zoom session with me, you're definitely more than welcome to do that. Okay, um, so the purpose of this introduction video is to show you guys who I am, um, talk about the syllabus, talk about this class, and then just kind of see what else comes up when I'm doing that. I was gonna do a live version of this and there may be some live stuff that you'll have the opportunity to um, interact with me on. It's just going to depend on how things go over time here. If I hear from a lot of you that you want to do a live meeting or a live group gathering, we can definitely do that. And um, if multiple of you want to come to my online office hours, we can do that all together as a group. And it's a good opportunity to get to know each other, get to know me. So even though this is online, let's not forget about the human piece to all of us. Um, and sometimes it's just better to talk to somebody in person. In fact, I'm not crazy about emails. Yes, I'll, I'm will i gonna read your emails and I'm gonna get back to you over email, but I would much rather let's set up a Zoom time that we can sit and talk face-to-face, -face, look at your quizzes, look at the material. Um, a lot gets lost in translation with email. So I'll just say that kind of up front. I'd much rather get to know you guys in a real person setting. And I think the closest we can do for that is Zoom. So anyway, um, first, I just want to say hello to all of you. So we have Tiffany and Ashley, Emily, Jasmine, Lizeth, Karen, Rebecca, Hannah, um, Jaden, Kendall, Shay, Heather, Daniel, Isabel, Jerry, Marquet, Austin, Brandy, Alana, Lance, Yolanda, Jacqueline, Solstice, and Tasha. So hello to all of you. Welcome. Um, let's stay in this together. I want to see all of you uh, succeed in this course. My goal is to put out this information as clearly and easily as I can for all of you. And I really want to see everybody pass this course, finish this course. It's my goal to get everybody through this course. With that said, every semester people drop. Um, but I would encourage all of you to set an intention right now that you're going to stick through this course and whatever it takes. And it's for some of you, it may take more. So for some of you, it may take less. Uh, everybody's coming in in different experience levels, different life settings. 
So I just want the best for everybody. And I'm willing to reach out and meet you where you're at. So to help in any way that I can. So let's look at this syllabus together and maybe talk about some of the potential pitfalls that can come up. Um, but first of all, yeah, let's just talk about some of the logistics with this course. So here's your syllabus. It is available online right now. Um, this is pretty much the only thing available right now. If you haven't seen the course yet, please make sure you have a look at your course. Notice that everything is in module format. Um, it's possible you can't see that yet, though, because I haven't published any of the modules. So I will be publishing the modules today and tomorrow. Um, but yeah, get oriented to your Canvas course. If you haven't taken a Canvas course or whatever, you'll you, it takes a minute to get oriented to where things are laid out. So this is Bio 201, this is four credit hours, this is spring 2021, and we are in section 10055. And that may come up, uh, probably comes up for me more than for you all. Everything in this course is online and nothing is live per se. Um, everything is recorded, the videos are recorded, your quizzes, exams, labs, and practicals are all through your Canvas course. Um, is that true? Yeah. <clears throat> the only thing that may happen is if we want to do a live uh, lab practical review, that happened in semesters past. And so I'll talk about that when we get there. So I am Dr. Allison Murky. Um, I'm a naturopathic physician. So if you aren't familiar with naturopaths, we are alternative medicine practitioners. So if I get a patient that wants to work with me, they most likely want herbs, um, herbal medicine as a treatment or homeopathy as a treatment, potentially acupuncture as a treatment. These are all things I was trained in to do. These are all of the alternative medicines. So I graduated from Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine in 2018. But before that, I was a teacher. I was a science teacher. Um, like I told you guys, I've been teaching anatomy for 15 years. I taught at UNLV where I graduated from, and I also have a master's degree in biology, which is actually what is credentialing me to teach this class is my master's degree, not so much my naturopathic degree. But what I find fascinating is every semester with students is we end up having really interesting conversations and talks about natural medicine. In my live classes that I used to have a line of students waiting to talk to me in between class about their health problems and are there any herbs for that problem or what is just my thought process of, about what's going on for them. So anyway, I am open to hearing about what's going on for you. If you ever have any questions related to you know, me or naturopathic medicine or health or anything like that. Um, I'm very open to that. I feel like that's why I'm here. Honestly, it's like my role is not just to teach you guys about anatomy, but show you what it's like to be a practitioner in the medical field. And then me specifically, I use nature as my treatment modality. So it opens up a lot of conversations, potential conversations. And you'll also see that in some, some of my recordings. I talk about that just briefly, just to give you guys a sense of some of the stuff that I've done, some of the things that I've seen. I worked at a cancer clinic for a little while. So um, I definitely have a lot to share in regards to that. Anyway, that's a little bit about me. Um, everything's online, like I said, my office, hours, uh, please make an appointment and we can zoom and we can do all of this. We, I can pull stuff up we can talk about it together. Please be open to that. Um, don't be shy. Don't be nervous. I'm very open. I would never, you know, reprimand anybody over office hours. That's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to help and facilitate your learning. Um, I didn't put my phone number there. Um, in the past, I have put my number because we run into issues that come up when we take exams. If you're in the middle of an exam, 
and your computer dies and I'm not by my computer, you know, there's a certain time that the exam is due and you want to get a hold of me immediately so that I can reset it for you or whatever. Um, I, you, you know, it's really just going to, we'll kind of see how this first round goes. If I need to put my number out there, that's fine. But I'm just going to wait on that for now. Otherwise, email me, um, email me through Canvas or through Outlook. But yeah, like I said, and I'll keep saying this, I'm very open to working with you all. So please don't hesitate to email me, reach out. You're not going to sound stupid. I'm not going to judge you for anything. I was in your shoes not that long ago. I mean, probably longer ago than I want to admit, but it doesn't change that. I know exactly how it feels to be a student. So I was a student four years ago in medical school. So I was in that seat for a long time. Um, and I know it can be intimidating to approach an instructor, but don't be intimidated. I'm fuzzy and friendly and really just want you guys to feel supported and confident in whatever, whatever you're pursuing with your degree here. Okay, let's talk about the class. So this is anatomy, right? So we're talking about the structure and function of the human body. We're going to talk about the tissues, the muscular system, the skeletal system, the nervous system. Um, this is the scope for 201. 202, which will be next semester, because um, all of you are going to pass through this and do just fine, is going to be more of your systems the, the renal system, the, the respiratory system, the circulatory system, that's 202. There's no official textbook. Some of you have reached out asking about a textbook. Get a good anatomy textbook. It doesn't have to be the one that the bookstore is recommending. Um, as long as it's published in the last 10 years and about 400 pages or more, anatomy has not changed very much in the last 10 years you know, what, you know, the tibia is the tibia is the tibia. So um, get a good book for reference, for pictures, for your own understanding. The text can really help explain what, what these 90 minute videos maybe cannot. So that's just something you're going to have to think about. There's no lab book. There is a lab book for my in-person class, but not for this one. You will see everything you need to know is gonna be on Canvas, Canvas for your lab, okay? So this is two technically separate classes. We have the lecture and then we have the lab. And you'll see that laid out in your modules. Each week you'll have your lecture, your lecture materials, and then your lab and your lab materials. And I'll go to Canvas here in a bit and show you guys that. I recommend Anatomy Zone on YouTube. This is somebody talking through anatomy models very eloquently. They do a really nice job. So if you're not getting enough comprehensive information through my lectures, through the PowerPoints, um, check out Anatomy Zone. <clears throat> all of the course content and learning outcomes, this is kind of all the stuff the school has me share with you. This is all coming from, you know, standards. Everybody in 201 is learning the same stuff. If you have a different teacher, there may be subtle nuances between the way we explain things, the questions that we ask on tests or quizzes, but ultimately every 201 student is learning this stuff right here. So our first lecture this week is anatomical terms and homeostasis. Then we talk about cells and, and histology, which is the tissues. The integumentary system is the skin, anatomy and physiology of the skeletal system, all the bones, all the joints, the muscular system, how muscles work together and muscle contraction. And then the nervous system, all the nerves in the central and peripheral nervous system, the autonomic nervous system, and then the special senses, sight, smell, hearing, taste. That's 201. I'll tell you, we spend a lot of time with bones and muscles. Like there's, that's a lot of content and you'll see the way that it's broken down in your syllabus. We spend some weeks just doing bones and muscles. Outcomes I won't go over. All right, so here we go. Here's the, the meat, the outline. So this week, we start off with the introductory lecture, which talks about basically the language of anatomy. So um, anatomy is half Greek and half Latin. And so you guys 
whether you realize it or not, are kind of going to be learning a new language in this course. Your lab, we're going to start looking at microscopy and mitosis. So what are all the different parts of the microscope? What do the different mitosis stages look like? And then we jump into histology and we go through the four different histology types, epithelial tissue, connective tissue, then muscle tissue, then nervous tissue. So that will be really the next three weeks of lab will be your histology stuff. We do an intro to chemistry. We do an intro to cell structure and function. You guys should remember from your basic biology courses, what's the mitochondria, what's the cytoskeleton, that kind of stuff. We do a lecture on tissues, and then those are the first four lectures for your first lecture exam, which is on a Tuesday, February 15th, you have exam one, which covers everything in your lectures um, up until that point. And then we also do an integumentary system uh, lecture that week. That will not be on lecture one exam. So in regards to the exams, so exams are, there's going to be four lecture exams and then a final. They're all worth 100 points. And then there will be four lab practicals. There's no lab practical final, just four lab practicals. Um, and we'll see when that first lab practical is. I think it's the following week after the 15th. But yeah, your exams. So you'll be doing it on a computer. So there is um, a couple of things about the exams. You're using Respondus Lockdown Browser. If you haven't used this for any of your courses yet, this is a software that teachers can use to make sure that you're not using other browsers during the exam. And it also monitors your, your tracking. You're getting your face tracked. If you look down or you look up, I get red flagged. And then I go and I look after the exam and I see was anybody red flagged and then I can go see why. So this has been an issue in every semester I've taught online with the browser. Just really know that the whole time you're taking the exam, um, I may or may not go watch. If I get red flagged, I'm going to go watch the exam. So just know that um, it's inevitable. People are going to be trying to look at papers. I've seen all the things now that can happen. Um, people propping up their phone under the uh, camera. Um, all of these things, though, like I hate to tell you, where I'm at now, you, you can't get away with any of them. So just study. Do your best on these exams and I promise you're gonna be okay. I know in the past people get really worried about the grade in here and that's because a lot of you in nursing programs do need a B or a C, just depending on the program you're applying to. Come talk to me. Before you feel like you have to cheat in this class, come talk to me first and let's be responsible adults and handle it the way that we should, which is, how, do we, how are we studying? How can we study better? How can we maximize our study while minimizing the time it takes to study? Okay. So no reason to cheat in this class. There just isn't. And there's a lot of information you guys will see. This class is a ton of information. So if you're not at least getting most of it in there, no amount of cheating um, can really save anybody. All right. I, I don't though, I, I'll tell you, I give everybody the benefit of the doubt. I don't assume people are cheating. I assume people are not cheating because anybody going into the nursing field or a science related field, I tend to assume has integrity. So I'm holding everybody to a high standard and I'm expecting that people are going to do well without the need to cheat in this class. So you have a window to take the exam. It's on the 15th, it's from four to 10 p.m. That's the time you're gonna, you, and you'll, I think the exams are open for 90 minutes. So during that time, you'll have that time to submit the exam. And um, I'll talk about this later too. Every exam I give out a review guide. So I will post that in your modules. And you'll be filling out this review guide for the introduction lecture, for the chemistry lecture, for the cell structure and function lecture, and then for the tissues lecture, and you'll fill it all in. 
And this is going to help you learn. It's going to help you give you some muscle memory, visual memory about these words and their definitions. And I accept those filled out reviewed guides for extra credit. So you'll see an assignment open the week of your exam. Um, show me, show me your filled out review guide. Okay. Well, I didn't do the review guide. Maybe somebody says I didn't do the review guide. I made a Quizlet instead. Great. Send me a link to your Quizlet. Or I didn't do any of that. I made flashcards. Great. Send me pictures of your flashcards. Whatever you use to study, I want to give you credit for whatever you created to help you study. Part of the reason with that is I write um, I write exams that are meant to challenge you. So these are not really difficult in-depth questions. It's just that there are details that you, you may not have considered. So I do ask a lot of details of the questions. I wanna see how deep you got into the material. And in order to kind of make up for that, maybe you're someone that like missed a few here and there because you didn't catch those details. Well, I want to give you some points because I want to, by you showing me how you studied and what you studied. Well, there's a hummingbird. So there is extra credit in this class. And I'm a very, I think, fair teacher. I think I do really good lectures with lots of detail. I test on a lot of detail, but at the end of the day, um, I usually do round up grades. I give extra credit opportunities. So you guys will see that as we go on, yes, it's a ton of material, but I am, I only put out that much material for your learning, but ultimately I want everyone to do really well. So as long as you show me, you're taking all the tests and quizzes, you're doing your best in studying. I'm, I'm only here to help. All right, your first lab practical is that same week. It's the Thursday of that week, 217, and it's the same situation. You have four to 10 p.m. Uh, the lab practical I think is 80 minutes instead of 90. I may be confusing those. Um, and your lab practical, again, online, you respond this lockdown browser, and there's going to be, you will see the format for the lab practical when you take your quizzes. So when things went online, um, we, what we had to do was go to the lab and take pictures of all the models. And then we're testing you on those pictures. Okay. So you guys aren't getting like the 3d model versions, the way that when I'm in person, I put stickers on the tibialis anterior muscle, and you've got to identify that. For you guys, you look at a picture and it's pointing to the tibialis anterior muscle and you've got to name it. The practicals are um, <clears throat> 50 questions and they're two points each. And usually, I'm just trying to think, um, sometimes the, it's like, there's two questions per picture. Um, so just be kind of get, when you, you'll see I'm gonna post a practice practical and you can look at that to see what the, what the actual format of the exam is going to be. Don't get too overwhelmed yet. Um, we still, you know, I haven't even talked about the quizzes. So these are the big things though. You're, your online exams and practicals. Those are monitored by Respondents Lockdown Browser. The quizzes are not. Every lecture, you'll have a lecture quiz and that's just a um, 10 question lecture quiz, two points each, so 20 point lecture quizzes. And then you'll also have lab quizzes. Lab quizzes are actually five questions, one point each. So I, I'm realizing I kind of skipped over that, yeah. So look. <laughs> It's a lot of stuff. I mean, if you look at this, the first week you have four quizzes. So, but this is unusual, right? Because we have the syllabus quiz and then you also have two labs this first week. So we'll do the, you'll take the lecture quiz that all the quizzes are gonna be due, going to be due Sunday night, the Sunday after that material has been presented. So we'll do the lecture. You'll watch the lecture. You can be, you can print out the PowerPoint. You could be filling in the PowerPoint. You could print off the review guide and be filling in the review guide. And then you'll take the lecture quiz. This week, we also have a syllabus quiz. 
For lab, we have two labs this week, which means we have two lab quizzes. So there just happens to be kind of a lot due this week. Um, the following week, if you look, we just have one lecture, one lecture quiz, one lab, one lab quiz, okay? So don't get too overwhelmed by this first week. Part of that is just kind of like a sink or swim technique. So I apologize. It's just the way I've always done it with this class. Okay, so sorry I skipped over that. I jumped right into the exams. Every week we have quizzes, lecture quiz and a lab quiz. So your first lecture exam is the 15th. The first lab practical is the 17th. Both of them you'll see you have the afternoon to do it all the way up until 10 p.m. Don't start the exam at 10 p.m. It's due at 10 p.m. So you've got to start it at least by nine. And what do I want to say else about the exams? Um, yeah, I think that's it for now. Um, also that week of the practical, we have a lab and lab quiz that week. It's not always like that. It just happened to be like that for that first week. Okay, after that stuff gets done, now we've looked at integument and skull. Now we jump into the bones, the axial skeleton, appendicular skeleton, bones, 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 bony, balonies. And then your second set of exams is um, your first lecture, your second lecture exam is March 8th. And then your second lab practical is March 10th. Notice that week, we don't have lectures and labs for both of those. So it's just kind of the way things fell. Um, and I believe I should have put this in there. That week is our spring break. So spring break is um, the 14th is the Monday, uh, March 14th to the 18th. So that's why we jump to the 27th there. I meant to put a little box there. That's our spring break. When we come back from spring break, we do all the muscles, 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 muscles. And then we start a little bit of nervous tissue. And then that, that will be on your lecture exam three. Same situation, um, the exam is 4 to 10 p.m. All of these use Respondus Lockdown Browser. And then we start into the nervous system. So let's look at the last couple weeks. So nervous system, um, special senses, week 15. Week 16, we are done with all lecture material. So week 16, which is the first week in May, will be your last lab practical. And that's all we're doing that week. The last week, the second week of May, we take our last lecture exam. And then we also take our final exam in that week. So we are done with didactic material um, that last, that first week of May. And so those last two weeks are just exams. So maybe that gives people a little bit of hope that it's not, um, we do kind of get two uh, exam weeks at the end of this class. So. so let's see. So we really have half of January, all of February. We get a week off in March. So that's a three week of March. And then April. So just under four solid months of material. It's a lot. It feels like a lot. I know it can be very overwhelming in the beginning, but you guys will get the hang of this. You'll get the hang of, okay, what do I need to do? What's the time in my week that I can fit in the lecture? What's the time in my week that I can fit in the lab? And then do really well on the quizzes. People really hang on to the, the quizzes. The quiz grades can really bolster your grade throughout the semester. If you're someone that does really well on quizzes, but maybe you're not doing as well on the exams, you can still end up with a really good grade in this class. And that's the way that the grades are meant to be. Because um, I know not everybody is a tremendous like test taker. Um, in regards to the time spent in this class, people, I know in the past for my Mesa college classes, we would say seven hours a week. Is that doable? Can you do three hours with the lecture material, three hours with the lab material, and then your quizzes and stuff? I would just think about that. Can you cut out seven hours 
in your week. I would recommend like an hour a day. Um, they say that's the best way to really learn, but you guys are just going to have to make it work for you. And I know that taking online classes tends to give you all the opportunity to shirk. You know, I'm, I'm not going to do it. I've got other things I want to do, um, but don't do that. Especially if you are nursing or science majors, you know, we need good practitioners in the field. So I have, I do have high expectations for the people that take this class. So anyway, okay, what else? Hopefully that all makes sense. Um, things that we're doing every week, things that are happening over the semester, spending some time in this class. Grading, so uh, lecture quizzes are 20 points each, lab quizzes are five points each. There will be four lecture exams and one comprehensive final. The final lecture exams are 100 points each. These are multiple, multiple choice, maybe some short answers, maybe fill in the blank, stuff like that, you'll see. Mostly multiple choice, okay, mostly. Um, there are four lab practicals. Those are, like I said, all pictures. And then the comprehensive final. The thing about the final is if you do well on the final, it can drop your lowest lecture exam grade, not the lab exams, the lecture exams. If you got a 45 on one of your lecture exams and you get an 85 on the final, I'm going to take that 85 and put it in for your 45. So that's like 40 extra points if a situation happens like that. So there's little bolsters everywhere to help you guys succeed in this class. There will be some extra credit opportunities. I have a few assignments that I send out throughout the semester that are like five points here, five points there. And then don't forget, if you send me your notes, your study notes for the exams, that's extra credit and things like that. So you'll see. There's, I think, I wanna say three, maybe four little extra credit things that I do. So here's the points breakdown. So it's a lot of points. Um, and then as with all of your classes, I'm sure what your percentage and, and, um, actual grades look like. There's only one grade in this class, not a separate lab and lecture grade, just one grade and give me some time to grade things. Um, a week would be nice. Usually it's, I don't take that long, but what you'll start to notice and what happens is I'll get emails after you guys have taken your lab quizzes and you'll say, oh, the computer graded me wrong. Can you go back and check my lab quiz? Yes, yes, yes. I go back and check your lab quizzes and regrade them. And I know I'm still gonna get a lot of emails um, about that. The, there is auto grading that Canvas does for your lab quizzes. And it happens for the practicals too. I go back and regrade all of your lab quizzes and all of your lab practicals, okay? Because I want to make sure that spelling wasn't misgraded. And that can actually be a lot of points for some people. Some people get a 55 on the practical before I go back and regrade it. And then they have an 85. Like it can be a lot that auto grading can really affect things. So I'm still gonna get people that get nervous and email me after they take their lab quiz, but just know I always go back and regrade the lab quizzes. Okay, um, here's some other helpful websites. Um, I guess you've got to be looking at this online to go to the links. This is all, I was teaching at Mesa Community College. This is the first semester I'm not. 80% um, of their classes went to in-person and I live in Cottonwood. So I was teaching online for them, but I'm not, they wanted me to drive down there this semester and I'm not. Um, so I'm teaching, this class online, I'm teaching this class in person in Clarkdale. And then in February, I start teaching online 
for Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine, the school that I got my naturopathic degree from, I'll be teaching an herbal medicine class and that's a six week class. So if I seem less than present in February and March, it's because I'm, I'm doing a lot more at that time. The other thing I do is I teach, I substitute teach at a charter school here in Cottonwood. So I'm at a lot of different schools. That's what three different schools last semester. It was four for a while. I was teaching for a paradise Valley community college. So I'm kind of just, I'm doing a lot of teaching right now. If I don't get back to you right away, if your grades don't populate right away, um, it's not because I'm lazy. I'm not lazy at all. I'm just very busy. And sometimes the grades don't happen right away anyway. So all of that, just to point out that if you see some stuff that's related to Mesa Community College, that's because that's where I used to teach. So some of these links might be Mesa links, but they should all still be available. Yeah, here's just kind of some fun questions. You guys can um, peruse these FAQs. This is a big one. This is a big one. Something happened and there were things that I missed. Can I make it up? Okay, let's answer this. Um, if you know you're going to a conference in April and you email me now and say, I'm looking at the schedule and I'm going to miss lecture exam three because of this thing that I've been committed to for months, no problem. The sooner you can let me know, the more likely I'm able to uh, rearrange the the time and date you can take something. Um, if you let me know the day or two before and you say, oh, I forgot to tell you, I have a conference and I can't do the exam. Sorry, that's no, no. It has to be at least a few weeks um, if I'm going to rearrange something for you. So you guys can maybe understand the reason I do that is to be fair to your cohort that you're not just telling me Oh, I kind of didn't study this last week. Can I redo it another time? No, sorry. Sorry on that. Okay, how about this one? I'm sick and I can't do something. Okay. Uh, usually I want to do a Zoom session with you and it's, I believe you're sick. It's not that. It's just, can we talk and see how sick you are? Like where, how can we, how can I work with you specifically um, just to help you get back on track. It's not about checking and seeing if you're actually sick. It's just, this is the human piece to this online teaching and online learning. Um, if you are sick, let's talk, like, let me help you and, and most likely be able to rearrange some stuff for you. If it's an exam that you're going to miss because you're sick, I will need a doctor's note. Okay. So, and I know some of you that, that may not be fair. Um, well, I can't afford a doctor or whatever. Okay. That's another reason we should talk first before I say anything. Can we just talk? Um, that just works better for me. I'm a, I'm a people person. So I do like to talk to people and help people. That's the whole reason I went into teaching and medicine as well. I know that's going to come up. It always does. So yeah. All right. Um, all right. And this just answers a little bit more about some of the questions I get a lot. And here's all Yavapai stuff you guys can look at. I talked about cheating. It's really hard to cheat in this class because I can see you taking the exam if I want to. This doesn't really apply. We're not really on campus. But if you do feel like somehow someone's harassing you in class, oh my gosh, please reach out to me. I don't know how or why that would happen, but you never know. And then um, time frame in getting back to you, please give me at least 24 to 48 hours if you email me, especially in February and March. I'm going to be very busy with all the different classes I'm teaching. So that's, yeah, give me a little bit of time. Um, all right. 
So let's um, go in and look at the Canvas course here. So I'm gonna stop that and we're gonna go here. All right, so we're gonna go home. Here's our homepage. Um, I can even go into student view so you guys can see. I can see what you're seeing right now. So right now you have the syllabus. I'm going to post a link to this introductory talk. Chat is just like if someone was online and you had a question, maybe you could ask them. Discussions, the real place for that, though, is here, the support page. If you have a question that you think somebody can help you answer, um, post it here, because if you have a question about it, you guys know someone else probably has a question about it. If you haven't had to use Respondus Lockdown Browser, um, download the browser. Here are the requirements for using the browser. Internet can be a huge problem. Make sure when you're taking the exam, you're in a place where you are not going to lose internet service, okay? That's huge. Go to Denny's, go to the library, go somewhere where you know it's not gonna drop out if it's not solid for you at home. Chromebooks, I think actually are supported now. Um, I'll have to see. I know I, there's an option for me in the browser to allow the Chromebooks to get used, but I've had problems with that. So we'll just have to see. Don't use a smartphone, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, in the past, um, what I'll do is when we get close to taking our first lecture exam, I'm going to post a practice quiz just to check and see that your browser is working and you're going to be able to take the quiz successfully. So make sure you take that. It's not going to be for points, but if you don't take that quiz and you have a problem with the browser, that I can't help you. Like, you know, I'm going to post this quiz so to make sure that everybody can successfully take an exam. Maybe I should make it for points. Um, yeah, I'll probably do that. Okay. And then this last thing, how are you studying? Um, just to get a topic going with you guys, how are you studying? Um, talk to each other, find out what's working. And then I'm also going to post a discussion board for introducing yourself. Okay. So right now you have access to those. Let's, um, I'm going to leave this and I'm going to show you my view quickly. I want to show you the modules. I haven't posted these yet, but um, I'm going to post welcome and syllabus. You'll have the syllabus quiz. The introduction is going to be a link to the introduction lecture, and then you'll have the introduction quiz. I already... I'm not going to post the exam one study guide um, just yet, um, maybe the end of this week. So that'll be there. And then also just the syllabus. That's everything for lecture. And then you go down to week one and there's all your lab stuff. We have two labs for the first week. So you'll see the video. You'll see the microscope parts. You'll see the mitosis uh, PowerPoint and lecture. And then we'll have the epithelial tissue lab. So those are the two different labs. And then you've got your two quizzes for this week. January 26th, is that correct? No, it should be the 23rd. So I got to change the dates on some of these. I just recently imported this class. So I'll fix some of these dates. But yeah, this is what these are what your modules are going to look like. It's going to go lecture stuff, lab stuff, lecture stuff, lab stuff. You'll see your lecture. You'll see all the materials you're going to need for that lecture. And you'll see your quizzes. And then... In week five, we take our first exam. So that'll be under modules as well. Look, completed lecture one review guide, extra credit, right? So you'll have a link to put that in your exam. And then we also have a lecture that week. So you'll see that in, there should be a quiz link in there as well. And then I don't know why there's two lecture exams. There will only be one. Um, the lab practical, that'll also be week five. And then you'll start the bones right after that first practical. So that's why that is all in there. So let's actually click on one of these. So we'll go here. We'll go to the introduction. This is what one of the lecture modules will look like. You'll have a link to download the PowerPoint. 
And so there's a comprehensive PowerPoint that's going to contain all of the possible pieces of information that you might get quizzed on or tested on. Okay, no, not hiding anything, no tricks here. Read the first chapter. So it's, it's prompting you to go to your anatomy textbook and look more into this for your own comprehensive knowledge. Maybe the PowerPoint takes you, um, what, 10 minutes, 15 minutes to thumb through. You could go read the first chapter in your book, maybe 30 minutes, and then watch the introduction lecture. And so that'll be a YouTube link. I can click on it just to show you. So here's my YouTube link. This is a little over an hour and it's just right. me talking through the so PowerPoint. So I won't play that, but yeah. Let's go back to Canvas here. And so a lot to do. Every week there's gonna be a lot to do. Downloading the PowerPoint, reading your textbook, watching the lecture, and then taking the quiz. Obviously I've got to change these dates here, but this is, I'm just showing you guys what it looks like. Okay, every week it's gonna look like that. And then for lab, let's click on a lab. So this week we have two labs. Week one lab video is just a um, recording you can watch. Whoops. With Mailchimp, you can provide more engaging lesson outputs in no time at all. Thanks to our AI powered. Okay. Oops. Hey guys. Okay. So that's an hour of just me talking through what looks like everything for week one, both labs, the microscopy and mitosis lab and the epithelial tissue lab. And it's usually not that long. Um, things are going to be a little bit longer up front because I'm just getting you guys oriented to what's happening in this class. And what else? So that should, and that's probably why I put it first is I'm kind of trying to explain a lot of stuff to you guys right there. Um, you've got a link to microscope parts. You have an image to download. Let's make sure this link is still active. Um, yeah, so sometimes, um, let's uh, go there. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw that JPEG. Yeah, so this is the kind of stuff that comes up for your first week, knowing all these different parts, you're gonna be quizzed on this and this will be part of your practical. And I'm almost done here. Let's just go back. Yeah, oops, okay. Um, mitosis. Whoops. Clicking the wrong buttons. This is a new computer. All right. Here's all your mitosis information. You've got some PowerPoint slides, and then you've got some pictures. Now, the thing about lab is how much you do in lab is really up to you. I'm not watching how many hours you spend going over your lab stuff. So you may feel like there's things you want to do in the lab and things that you aren't going to work for you. Like um, labeling pictures, that would be something I would want to do, but you may do better with other things. So that's really going to be up to you. It'll probably take some time for you to discover when you go to take the quizzes, what works for you and what doesn't. And if you come and talk to me during my office hours, I can help you figure out what are the things you can be doing, you know, what's going to work better for you, what's not going to work for you. And then we have the epithelial tissue lab, all the different, um, this, what I usually like to do is give you all the stuff you're responsible for knowing. So specific tissue you need to know, your objectives, all of the possible tools, and there's a lot, and then even more resources, virtual histology, soft chalk, these soft chalk things I really like, they're just little um, drag and drop activities. So, whoopsies. So we'll go up here. And can you label all of this? Um, looks like there's four boxes. So can we do this? That's definitely the cytoplasm. That's definitely in the nucleus. The cell membrane is there. Whoops. Um, what does it want here? Yeah, I thought so. Cell membrane is here. Okay. And then we're just putting this at the top for simple squamous epithelium. So stuff like that, 
kind of fun, kind of, kind of a little babyish, but that's okay. Whatever works for you. And then there's lots of videos. Oh my God, are there histology videos? Lots and lots of histology videos. So have a look at some of those, you know, we're limited. We are not in person. We're not busting out the microscopes and I'm not there over your shoulder pointing different things out to you. That's why it's going to be up to you guys to hold yourself accountable to watching these videos and really getting good at um, keeping yourself accountable and doing the work you know you need to do to really learn this stuff. So a lot of lab stuff this first week, there's two separate labs, but it almost kind of seems like three because you've got microscopy, mitosis, and epithelial tissue. And then your quizzes. So the way the quizzes are outlined is you have the microscope and mitosis quiz and then the epithelial tissue quiz. So just know that it's it's organized a little odd, but um, I haven't published it yet. I also haven't changed the date on stuff yet. So you guys can see where I'm at with stuff. And on that note, if you're noticing that it seems like something should be published and it's not, um, please reach out to me as soon as you realize it. There's even a thing that you can do that sends me a message that you tried to access something and couldn't. Um, the problem with that is if you do that, it doesn't tell me specifically what you couldn't access. If you can send me an email, say, hi, I'm Thomas from um, your online course. Can you please make sure that the um, epithelial tissue lab quiz is published. So that helps me, first of all, please tell me you're in my online course and not my in-person course. I'm still learning who is who. And just tell me specifically what's not published. That really helps me because otherwise I really don't know. All right. So I think that's it. I know it's a lot this semester. It always is. People are always overwhelmed with how much material this is, but just commit to it. Set some intentions. Set some intentions around this being your priority, your career being your priority, because that's this is training you for your career. And in your introduction post, or if you just want to send an email, if you don't want to tell everybody what's going on for you, please tell me who you are what your major is, what your intentions are for your career. Um, that can really help me a lot. So yeah, please let me know. All right. Sorry, this went on for a little bit longer, but um, trying to give you guys a good sense of how this course runs for anyone that hasn't taken it. And yeah, um, let's have a great semester. Reach out to me anytime. I am 100% here to support you guys. Okay. Okay, guys, that's it for now. <laughs> we'll talk soon. Bye.